Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be giving you my top 10 tips and tricks for the limited time Mad Thunder April Fools event in War Thunder. I have been playing this game mode an absolute ton and have unlocked every single vehicle largely due to the tips and tricks in this video. Now that said, I see so many people losing out on getting such easy resources and rage that I felt the need again to do this video as I want everyone playing this game mode to get as many rewards as quickly as possible. Possible. Plus, after I give you my tips and tricks, I will give a brief description of each vehicle and their associated modifications so you can know what they're like before deciding to purchase them. But with all that said, let's get into the video. For tip number one, when first starting, use the Echidna, but immediately switch to the strong slash powerful boar for the first vehicle that you use in a match once you have those unlocked. The reason is that those versions of the boar have a top mounted RPG that largely one shot kills enemies, and thus it can act both as an interceptor and loot gatherer, being that it has 50 cargo capacity. I always start my matches with a strong boar, and most of the time, I get at least one or two kills and a successful evac with full resources. And again, it is hugely because of that top-mounted RPG that has a full 360 degrees of turret traverse, which is far better than the stock boar. Second, invest in loot scanners for your most used vehicles. I personally have loot scanners equipped on my boar and echidna as well as now my mule as it helps a ton in saving time to gather resources likely at least one or two minutes per match which is quite a bit of time because of this you can more quickly pinpoint loot and also better determine if it's the type of loot that will benefit you or not Again, saving you time, which means more evacs and of course, more resources per match. For tip 3, figure out a path that you like in the map and perfect it. For example, if starting on the left side of the map, I always spawn at the bottom base when playing in team battles, so I can cut through the left side of the map while gathering loot in order to successfully evac at the top. This route offers a lot of cover and is thus a very safe route for me. Doing this along with equipping a loot scanner has made it so that I typically have three plus successful evacs per match, whereas before I might only have one or two. Doing this also gives you the advantage of knowledge of terrain, which means that, again, you can more easily hide because you know exactly where everything is, and also more easily target enemies for tip number four. If the area that you're in is empty, go around and check to see if destroyed vehicles have had their loot stolen. If not, not only can you take the loot if you have space for it on your vehicle, but there's a good chance that you can get yourself a free raid token as well. There are plenty of people that are unaware that each kill actually gives two rage tokens at a minimum, one from destroying the enemy and the other one from going up to their destroyed vehicle in order to collect more. Sometimes you can even get several rage tokens that you can loot directly from their body. In each match, I typically get a few rage tokens from simply checking destroyed vehicles because no one else did. Again, do that when no one else is around so you're not being shot to death while you're collecting loot and rage. For number five, if you have full rage, which you should be able to see on the top of your screen because it has a lit up icon that is in red, you should quickly fill up your resources if you have not done so already and evac. Once you have full rage, which again is five rage, you will be visible on the minimap to enemies, which means that they can easily track you down to steal your rage and resources. Additionally, when you have five rage, you can collect no more, which means that all additional kills and looting will yield no more rage. You have to get to the evac in order to get to your new vehicle in order to start collecting rage again. For number six, learn minimap icons. I know this might sound a little bit obvious, but it's very, very true because there are several different types of resources that you need, such as armor, scrap, electronics, things of that nature. If you know where to find them, that's where you're going to want to go typically in order to find the majority of them. For example, vehicle parts look like gears on the minimap, armor looks like like four dots around a square if that makes any sense and also of course electronic parts looks like a computer chip so again once you learn what each of the icons on the mini map means you will much more quickly and effectively be able to get yourself resources in order again to unlock new vehicles and also upgrades for your vehicles for number seven save your resources for more advanced vehicles most people will only keep low level vehicles and thus once you get into the first upgrades being the reptile and the armadillo 
solo, you can start annihilating enemies in order to gather loot and rage relatively quickly. Or, like I said before, the first upgrades you should probably get are going to be the strong slash powerful boar, but I personally also have the solid echidna because that is actually a pretty decent vehicle for mid to late game. For number 8, make sure that you're somewhat close to one of the evac zones before the 1 minute and 30 second mark. At that point in the match, all four evac zones open up to everyone for use. Also, if you don't think you can make it to one of the evac zones in time, consider driving around to enemy corpses that are near you. Though you can't take the resources with you if you don't successfully reach the evac zone, you still get to keep the rage that you gather. As I said before, there are likely to be plenty of corpses, so dead vehicles, that have never had their rage taken from them, which means that you should be able to get a few quick rage tokens at the end of a match with relative ease and without too much resistance. For number 9, don't get focused too much on looting a single area. I would say to get around 60 to 80 percent full of loot and then move on. There's a good chance that you'll find enemies, corpses, or just random loot lying around on your way to the evac zone that will then top you off. And finally, always aim for the gunners first, at least if you have them in your view. If you can do that, then you basically neutralize any sort of way that they have to attack you, and then of course go for their transmission, driver, so on and so forth, and secure the kill. Now with that said, let's go over the vehicles that you can unlock from the first ones that you have, so the echidna, the porcupine, and the boar, all the way through the mule, and also their various versions. So of course, first the echidna. This is your basic vehicle, basically it is an interceptor that has more or less around a 360 degree turret and a 40 millimeter projectile. It is a pretty good sniper and overall vehicle. It can collect up to 25 loot and once you get the upgraded version, the solid echidna, you will only be able to collect 20 loot but it does have enhanced armor around the crew which actually helps out quite a bit especially for the end game. Next up we have the porcupine. The porcupine is something that I use at the very end of the match typically if I only have around one to two minutes left. The reason being is that, aside from the mule, this is the fastest vehicle you can get in this game mode, and is thus excellent for, again, going to those corpses that you can get extra rage from, or if you can, just gathering up a few resources and then quickly hitting the evac zone before the end of the match. This also has the solid version, which is just going to be an up-armored version with 20% less resource capability, but of course you also have the strong and the powerful versions. The strong version is basically an unarmored porcupine but with flamethrowers at the front, and the powerful version is basically the armored with flamethrowers at the front, and of course it keeps its standard 20mm cannon on the back. Personally, I don't really think that it's worth it to upgrade, simply because the main thing with this vehicle is going to be speed, and quite honestly, those flamethrowers suck. Next up, we have the boar. This is going to be one of two loot carriers that you can get in this game mode. This can carry up to 50 loot, and of course as the standard boar, you have the solid boar, which is the upper armored version, and also the strong and powerful boars, which are basically an up-gunned and then an up-gunned and up-armored version. Again, the up-armored version sacrificed 20% when it comes to your loot carrying capability. Some people may say that losing that additional carrying capacity is worth it, but in my opinion, I would just go with the strong boar whenever you can, because again, it has that amazingly powerful top-mounted RPG, which is just fantastic and largely one-shots enemies. Aside from that, of course, it also has a 50 cal on the side of the vehicle, as well as a 23mm AA cannon on the back, which is fantastic. A dual mount, no less, so it is very, very powerful, and can also, of course, move very, very quickly. Next up, we have the Reptile. This is basically going to be a very quick vehicle, an interceptor, with a 30mm cannon on the back, and it, of course, also has the solid, strong, and powerful modifications as well. Solid being an up-armor version that gets 20% less resource gathering, which means that I can carry 20 instead of the regular 25. The strong version, which gets Hydra rocket launchers on the back, and of course the powerful version, which has the 30 millimeter cannon, Hydra rocket launchers, and the up-armored version. This is a pretty quick vehicle. I really, really like it, despite the fact that it has a fast-firing 30 millimeter cannon. It is actually pretty useful, at least in short bursts, as a sniper, and is one of my favorite offensive vehicles in this game mode. Next up, we have the Armadillo. 
It's very similar, at least in so far as its armament is concerned, to the Reptile, but it's a totally different sort of take on the same vehicle. So this is a much, much slower vehicle. It only goes 58 kilometers per hour. In fact, it is currently the slowest vehicle for this game mode, though if nothing else, it does have pretty decent armor. Outside of the tank, this is probably the most well-armored vehicle in this game mode. Now, of course, it has the standard version, the solid version, and then, of course, the strong and the powerful versions. Now, the strong and powerful versions mount a rocket launcher on the back. I believe that those are the same rockets that you can get in the German Nebelwerfer, which is a low BR German tank. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments below. But personally, I find that the Reptile is a much more well-balanced vehicle, though, of course, there is plenty of space in this game mode for the armadillo because it has very very nice armor and is pretty easy to get quite a few kills with it plus it has a single 300 round mag whereas the reptile has smaller 50 round mags and i believe six of them so it's much easier to fire for an extended period of time with the armadillo just a really good overall vehicle especially when the enemy is getting really really powerful next up we have the rhino this is the tank that a lot of people are interested in basically it comes in two different flavors a 90 millimeter flavor and if i'm not mistaken a 105 millimeter flavor the 90 millimeter is the standard version this is a fully stabilized vehicle which is great and it is a solid shot so it's not incredibly powerful but it is a pretty chunky round and will still cause a lot of damage it's also fairly well armored and again you have it very much like the other vehicles where you have the standard the solid the strong and the powerful and it goes in the same way where the standard just being the standard 90 millimeter and also the not up armored version if that makes any sense whereas the solid is the up armored version but it keeps the 90 millimeter cannon and then of course you have the powerful and strong which the strong has the un up armored but it has the larger cannon that also has he filler in it so it is a much more effective projectile and then of course you also have the powerful which is the up armored plus again it has the bigger more powerful cannon again all of these are going to be fully stabilized which is fantastic the rhino is actually surprisingly quick one of the quicker vehicles in this game mode and is also pretty decently armored not by any means is it going to be invincible but it is pretty decent especially versus weaker vehicles like the porcupine and then finally of course you have the mule this is the last vehicle that you can get in this game mode at least as of current and this has a 100 loot capacity which is absolutely crazy much like every other vehicle on this list besides the first get with the echidna the porcupine and the boar they all cost one rage in order to spawn into which kind of sucks mule included you cannot spawn this at the beginning of the match this is the fastest vehicle in this game mode it is also the largest and also it comes with only two crew members and a 50 cal up front with a 7.62 turret on the back so not very impressive at all offensively but this thing is incredibly quick and also carries two times the amount of loot as any other vehicle in this game mode so very very cool and unfortunately it only has one upgrade which is the solid mule which basically gives it enhanced armor but of course will cut its carrying capacity down from 100 to 20 so a pretty big jump but it is what it is you will get slightly better protection again for that loss of carrying capacity but that's pretty much how it is with every other one if you have the solid or the powerful versions you're going to get a 20 percent reduction in carrying capacity but that being said that is about it all the tips and tricks i I could come up with plus of course vehicle descriptions on every single vehicle in this game mode if you don't mind please consider liking commenting subscribing i would greatly appreciate all of it by the way thanks again and i'll see you all on the other side take care everyone